This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. Tonight's sports scene packs a punch as we look ahead to next week's Africa boxing qualifiers in Dakar, Senegal, where the best pugilists will trade blows for the coveted 33 slots. 22 men and 11 women from the continent will make it to the Tokyo 2020 Summer Olympic Games. Welcome to your home of African sports and news, views and interviews here on CGT in Africa. This is Sports Scene and I'm Mahia Mutua in Nairobi. Let's check out what else is coming up on tonight's show. Celebrations as Egyptian giants Zamalek toast a memorable CAF Super Cup victory in Qatar. And teenage polo player Aisha Suleiman is breaking barriers for women in conservative Nigeria. Welcome to the show. Now, Malian boxer Mohamed Diaby has relocated to Senegal to train and boost his chances of qualifying for the July Olympic Games in Japan. The 36-year-old athlete who missed the last edition in Rio is out to make his country proud in the Japanese capital. CGTN's Sadiq Shaban has more from Dakar. My name is Mohamed Diaby. I come from Mali. I'm a boxer. I fight uh, in uh, speed boxing and English boxing. I've uh, 35 years and uh, I live here in Dakar. It's a routine that Mohamed Diaby knows too well. Born a French citizen, Diaby switched allegiance to Mali to boost his chances of playing the game at the highest possible level. It's my country also, but uh, Mali is my earth country. So uh, I want to represent Mali, uh, I want to represent my family and uh, and uh, if, it, if, it is, if it is possible, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's better for me. For two years, Diaby has been preparing for the 2020 African Boxing Championship in Dakar. He knows the toughest opponents will be coming. Uh, Morocco, because uh, they have um, a lot of experience. Uh, Algerian people, you know. Cameroon is a good country. And uh, Ghana, they have a lot of boxers and uh, South Africa. It's good, it's good for me. It's in uh, my house because now I live in Dakar. The event is in Dakar. So uh, in, if, if, when you fight in, in your house, it's better for you. He missed the last Olympic Games in Brazil after he switched from English boxing to kickboxing. Four years earlier, he was disqualified from the London Olympic Games for doping during the African Boxing Olympic qualifiers in Morocco. It's not my, my, my fault, it is uh, uh, just uh, an accident and uh, they say, okay, you can go back to the competition. It's my light chance because, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit odd for, for practice the next uh, Olympic, uh, Olympic game in Paris. But uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good moment for me because I'm, I, I, have, I have some experience. I, have, uh, I, I want to, to, to win something. I want to go to Tokyo. I want to qualify for, for, for my country. And I, I, I think if I, if I can qualify for my country, uh, it doesn't stop uh, the world Mali, but it's good for the population. They can, they can know some Malian can do something. The African Boxing Championships in Senegal in February will serve as a continent's qualifiers for the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. Diaby, who hopes to carry Mali's flag during the opening ceremony, will first have to floor his opponents in Dakar and earn a ticket to the games in Japan. Sadiq Shaban, CGTN, in Dakar, Senegal. Well, Ghana's national boxing team, the Black Bombers, are also gearing up for the Tokyo Olympics. But before that, they need to qualify for the games at the African qualifiers set to take place in Senegal later next week. The country has won three Olympic boxing medals in its history and the team hopes to make it to the podium once again. Nabil Ahmed Rufai reports from Accra. Sarah Appel has her eyes set on the Olympics, which is why she's constantly working on her jabs and hooks. Every day we come to training, we train, we do physical, sparring, we do press-up, push-up, 
and we are still training. We will, keep, we will keep on training until we get there. And if we get there, we are not going to give up. We will make sure we fight and qualify for the Olympics. Sarah is among 41 amateur boxers of Ghana's national boxing team, the Black Bombers, in camp preparing for the Tokyo Olympics. The team hopes to qualify for the Games after participating in the African qualifiers in Senegal in February. Going there, we are going to face more than 50 plus African countries and it is only few of them that will be selected for the uh, uh, Olympics Games. So um, we are not resting, we keep on pushing. We were, we, today we were working on the uh, sparring to be able to see some of their uh, uh, mistakes and then we we'll see how we can in, uh, keep on improving them. Ghana has only four Olympic medals, three in boxing. Boxing won the country a silver medal in 1960 in Rome, a bronze medal in 1964 in Tokyo, and another bronze medal in 1972 in Munich. Boxing coaches say the long drought in winning medals is a result of poor preparation. They hope this year will be different. Stop! Ghanaian boxers are known for their strong jabs. This is something they are looking to perfect as they prepare for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Get ready. Box. Still, coaches here are not happy they are going into the Olympic qualifiers with new amateurs who haven't competed at such levels before. They say it's because those who have represented the country at the Olympics in the past move on to professional boxing and are no more interested. We go with uh, fresh boxers because our boxers most of the time stand uh, professional. So it's a, it's a challenge for us. We need to always improve uh, the, uh, their techniques, their tactics, their endurance level, uh, the, uh, the, the exposure that they get, and then all of a sudden they, they dash to professional. The coaches are, however, determined to see Sarah Appel and her teammates, the Black Bombers, qualify for the Olympics and they hope to punch their way to the podium in Tokyo. Nabil Ahmed Rufai, CGTN, Accra, Ghana. Well, heading east now, Uganda will send 13 boxers to take part in the Olympic qualifiers in Senegal next week. It will also be the first time the country's female boxers vie for Olympic slots, as CGTN's Leon Senyange now reports. The sparring and gloves all put aside. And a little fun for Uganda's boxers. The kick about a change from weeks of rigorous training. But instead of going to on road run, we prefer playing football because football helps a lot to stamina and endurance. And it's a chance to take their minds off the challenges ahead. The main aim for the boxers will be Olympic qualification and they will need more shots, not at goal but on their opponents when the African qualifiers begin. All the hard work has been put in right from the national selection matches early this year to the training now. Everything is being covered and everyone you see here can go and represent the country. Uh, everyone has been trying to train hard so that he, he or she makes her dreams come true. This is the chance for everyone. This is the chance for every boxer, a girl and a boy who is on the team to go and represent so that you make your dreams come brighter because it's the only chance you're going to use here in Africa. The qualifiers take place from the 20th to 29th of February in Senegal's capital, Dakar. For the first time, there will be female boxers seeking a bath to the Olympics. Five women have been selected for the qualifying tournament. Emily Nakarema will be the captain. I believe in myself. I know with God everything is possible. Even if the opponents look stronger, it is about the confidence. I know I will perform well. The sport is experiencing a renaissance in Uganda. Previously, mismanagement of the sport had frustrated many boxers. If one has got a chance, this is, this is the difference between the former executives and the, the, the current one. Because once you do your work, you beat up someone, you, you, you are guaranteed a, a space or place in the, on the national team, which is, wasn't um, in, in, in what, in the past. 
Uganda has only ever won four Olympic boxing medals. 2020 is a chance to improve that tally. But getting to the Tokyo Games will be the first priority. Leon Senyanga Sijitien, Kampala, Uganda. Well, ahead of the qualifiers in Dakar, there has been some confusion on the scoring rules and how they'll affect boxers seeking a ticket to Tokyo 2020. This comes after the International Olympic Committee suspended the International Boxing Federation following the Rio 2016 Olympics refereeing scandal. CGTN CS Duplicy brings us this report from South Africa on what the 10-point Olympics scoring system is all about. This year in Tokyo, the pride of African boxing will be aiming to once again bring back Olympic medals. The good news is that the rules for the events that gets underway on July 25th will largely remain the same with an end of round display from the judges. So to explain the 10 point must system that will be used, I've asked a friend of mine, Boyd Allen, to give us a demonstration to show what the five judges are looking for when they're scoring the bouts. So the first thing the judges will be looking for are significant strikes. Significant strike is a clean blow landed with the right part of the glove, the top part of the glove, and turning the hand correctly. For example, I throw a body shot, turn and twist the glove so that it lands nice and clean to the body, and if I land a hook to the head, turn and land with the right side and the top side of the glove, not the inside of the glove. So another point that the judges will be looking for is the domination and control of the ring and the technicality of your strikes. For example, if I'm putting a lot of forward pressure on my opponent and they're moving back all the time, I'm winning the bout. If they're putting pressure and I'm moving back all the time, the judges will see her as the aggressor and I will be losing the fight. Although if I'm moving backwards and landing the cleaner strikes to the head and to the body with the right technique, I will be winning. And if I'm moving backwards and she's landing the cleaner strikes to the head and to the body, she will be winning the bout. Another aspect that the judges will be looking at is the sportsmanship and respecting the rules uh, with regards to fouls. One of the fouls that they'll be looking at is pushing the elbow and pushing the head up with the elbow. Strikes to the back of the head behind the ear. Low blows and holding your opponent. With safety being a, a big part of the amateur boxing and no head go in play anymore, the refs are going to be really strict when it comes to their decision making and their calls. And you can end and stop a fight in certain ways. A knockout being one where the ref and the fight is stopped straight away. There's a TKO where there's an electronic eight count. You can win on points, where there's a point-based decision, and you can win by ref stoppage, where he stops the fight due to too much damage. Uh, good luck to all the boxers competing in Dakar. Enjoy the fight. Only 22 men and 11 women from Africa will qualify for the Olympic Games, with eight men's and for the first time in history, five women's weight categories. One athlete from each country will qualify for the 13 events, meaning that only the best will secure passage to the sporting showpiece. From there, it's a straight elimination. Therefore, the boxers from Africa will need to punch well above their weight to claim coveted Olympic gold. CS Duplicy, CGTN, Johannesburg. You're watching Sports Scene here on CGTN. We'll be bringing you more boxing after this short break, as well as... Telling you about celebrations as Egyptian giants Zamalek toast memorable CAF Super Cup victory in Qatar. How will your world change today? What happens here? What happens there? Or what you make happen for yourself? If it matters to you, it matters to us too. Your stories are the stories that need to be told. Africa Live. Find your voice. How would you create your legend? On the fields, on the tracks, in the arenas of Africa. Were you born to be a player? Could this moment be yours? Sports scene, fine.
Welcome back. Well, let's take you back into the boxing ring where Kenya's national team has been finalizing its preparations for the upcoming Continental Olympic qualifiers in Dakar. Boxing is the only other sport to deliver Olympic medals to Kenya other than athletics. Well, ahead of Tokyo 2020, retired boxer and two-time Olympian Benson Gisharo tells CGTN's Mohamed Abu Bakar about Kenya's boxing pedigree. Benson Gisharu makes his way into the community social hall at Mukuru Kwanjenga's slum just outside Nairobi city to meet up with young, enthusiastic and aspiring boxers. Gisharu is one of the most decorated amateur boxers in Kenya, having represented the country in numerous continental and global competitions. With a boxing career span of over two decades, the physically well-conditioned and crisp puncher has commanded a lot of admiration in the country's boxing fraternity. When I began my boxing career, I lost my first fight. So I always tell people it's never about how you start, it's always about how you finish. I remember when I represented Kenya in my first two Commonwealth Games, I lost both times. But it wasn't until my third try in Delhi, where I ended Kenya's 12-year medal drought in boxing at the Commonwealth Games. The silver medal in New Delhi in 2010 proved to be his breakthrough year. Gishara went on to qualify and represent Kenya at two Summer Olympic Games. However, he recalls how his routes to both Olympics were very different. I remember very well my route to both Olympics, the first one in 2012. I qualified straight through the Continental Championships. In 2016, it wasn't so straightforward. Despite being a favorite, I lost my first fight in the Continentals. Not winning the Continentals was not the end of the road for Gisharu, but in the most difficult of circumstances, he had to go to the World Championships then to fight for his Olympic slot in Rio. I had to go to Venezuela. That was the alternative route to the Olympics. I remember visa issuance was a problem. There was only one ticket available. I had to travel without a coach. I was all by myself. I went on to win all my three fights there and became the first Kenyan boxer to qualify without a coach. I think first African as well, or maybe even in the world. Gisharu had beaten all odds. He went on to represent his country at a second Olympics in Rio in 2016, a discipline so difficult to qualify for. Two years later, in 2018, Gisharu announced his retirement from boxing, dedicating his time to passing his knowledge and experience to the next generation of Kenyan boxers. Benson has always been a respectful person and very humble. He never looks at where boxing has taken him. He has always based his success from where his boxing started. He's never forgotten where he comes from, and once he hung his boxing gloves, I remember he came here and said he'll try to find another Gisharu from this area. To date, Gisharu remains the only Kenyan boxer to win medals in two different weight categories, a flyweight silver medal at the 2010 Commonwealth Games and a bantamweight bronze medal in Glasgow in 2014. Mohamed Abubakar, CGTN. Well, further afield now, Egyptian football fans have taken to the streets in celebration after Zamalek won the CAF Super Cup in Doha on Friday night. With a 3-1 victory over Tunisian side Esperance, the White Knights surprised their fans with the result marking their fourth Super Cup title and their first in 17 years. Our Cairo correspondent Adel Mahrui has more on the big Zamalek party. <laughs> Cafes in Cairo were packed with football fans. Zamalek is the first Egyptian team to compete for the CAF Super Cup in five years. That night, the White Knights represented the whole country. With an opening goal after just two minutes and a 3-1 victory, Zamalek blew fans' minds away. I didn't expect that early goal. We all thought it would be a tie and penalties. That early goal opened the match and it was a great game. I thought we would end the main time with a draw, 
then head for penalties. Esperance is a very strong team. They have many players with foreign experience. I'm very happy for the team. After the match, the club had its gates wide open for everyone to join the celebrations. For 17 years, El Zamalek has not won the African title. There's an entire generation from the club's supporters who have not seen such a moment. I am extremely happy. This is the first African Super Cup I've watched with my team. I'm too happy to find words to express myself. This is the first Super Cup for me with the team, and it won't be the last. Next will be the Egyptian Super Cup. We were down from the start of the season, but in this match, we've seen a new Zamalek. The Super Cup only sets up the scene for a series of fiery games for Zamalek. Soon, they will clash twice against Esperance in the quarter-finals of the CAF Champions League. But first, the White Knights are scheduled to face Al Ahli for the Egyptian Super Cup this Thursday. Adel Mahroui, CGTN, Cairo. Well, it's time for us to take another short break, but don't go anywhere. Here's what's coming up. Teenage polo player Aisha Suleiman breaking barriers for women in conservative Nigeria. Polo was introduced to Nigeria in 1904, long before football, and it has remained a largely elitist and male-dominated sport since in the nine cities it is played in. However, trailblazing Aisha Suleiman is breaking down barriers for women in the conservative northern Kaduna state. CGTN's Kelechi Mekalam brings us the inspiring story of this 18-year-old prodigy. Aisha Suleiman is from northern Nigeria, a highly patriarchal society. But the 18-year-old is making waves in polo, otherwise known as the sport of kings. She started out barely three years ago. Her attraction was born out of her love for horses. But her entry into the sport came with a lot of backlash. Playing and growing passion was really hard because it is one of those things that people find weird here in the northern part of the country. So when I started, it was really challenging because people tend to see the negative side of me. It felt really abnormal for a lady to ride, not talk of playing. So it was really challenging and stressful at first. But then with time, I got used to the environment and the way the society saw me. Nigeria's Muslim North is extremely conservative. Women are hardly ever seen or heard. So making a headway in a male-dominated sport proved increasingly challenging for Aisha. So many times I've cried due to certain things I find personal. But then there was a time I got really prepared to play a tournament and then I got pushed out for no particular reason. I think that's uh, one of the worst encounters I've had with the players and the game itself. But Aisha wants to change the narrative. She's encouraging more women like herself to take up the sport. I hope I get to change the fact that ladies have been discriminated if you have a passion to play. I hope I get to change the fact that polo is regarded as a prominent, as a strong sport in the nation, especially in the northern part of Nigeria. And I hope ladies get to grow passion and interest into playing as time goes by. Aisha is one of the very few Nigerian women playing polo professionally, defying the norms and achieving great feats. She's also won medals and trophies in local tournaments, but she has got bigger dreams, and that is to score some big wins on the international scene. Kilechia Mekalam, CGTN Kaduna, Nigeria.
Well, we return to the Olympics and specifically to Uganda, where the country will, for the first time in its history, have a rower competing at the Olympic Games. Kathleen Noble will represent the East African country at the Summer Olympiad this July. The rower talked to Leon Senyange about her long and winding road to Japan. Kathleen Noble will become Uganda's first ever rower to rest at the Olympics. The 25-year-old will line up at the Summer Games in Tokyo in the women's single skulls. It's been a culmination of many years of hard work and perseverance. It was just an area of my life where I was able to push myself harder than I had ever pushed myself before, especially doing some of the indoor like workout sessions that like I would I would go so hard that I would end up throwing up and lying on the floor and thinking I can never do that again. I'm never going to row again. Raised in Uganda, Kathleen only started rowing while at university but competed at her first junior rowing championships in 2016. Last year, she won her two-kilometer single skull category race at the Africa Rowing Regatta in Tunisia. That was her ticket to the Olympics. I had this sense that if I don't try, I'll always regret not trying. Um, and so I think I went into it with, with this, like, this desire to just like give it my best shot and if that wasn't good enough that's okay but like to know that I tried and so to actually have qualified was quite surprising actually. Kathleen says qualifying for the Olympics ranks as her greatest sporting moment so far. While she's already in Uganda's rowing record books, Kathleen is aware of the expectations that come with being at the Games. I think really what I want is to go and to feel like I did my best. Um, and, and I think I'll know that by how I feel at the end of the race. <laughs> I think I'll know that I've done my best if I finish the race and I'm just completely spent, you know, totally exhausted. Inspired by the Olympic dream, she's pulling ahead in her training. But she wants to see other young Ugandans follow in her wake. I think that, especially within the, the, the women's field, I think that could happen again in four years. If someone, if there's a woman here who wants to train hard, like I really do believe that we could qualify someone for the next Olympics as well. Kathleen will spend the next months training away from Uganda. Her category races in Tokyo will start on the 24th of July. Kathleen is aware of the expectations when she hits the waters in Tokyo. She admits it will be an experience, but hopes her participation will inspire many other young growers here. Leon Senyange, CGTN, Luzira, Central Uganda. And that's where we leave it on this week's edition of Sports Scene. Do remember you can send your feedback to the contacts on your screen and follow us on our digital media platforms. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm Mahia Mutua. We leave you with images from Portugal where surfers took to the water to tackle some of the biggest waves in the world in spectacular fashion. <laughs>